All right, I, I got to bust up the, good the Buffalo narrative. Love Fest, even though I brought it upon myself <laughs> as, a, as a recovering Browns fan from Sunday. But let's get to our first player, Tony Pollard, who Dynasty League Football November startup ADP was RB21. He's currently RB8 in half PPR points per game, despite only playing two games without Zeke, which is honestly pretty incredible. 25 years old, last year of his rookie contract. Mm -hmm. This one, I think, can go a lot of ways because, well, he could go a lot of ways. Final year of his contract, does he resign with, with Dallas? Do they keep Zeke around? If he does, I believe there's a they can actually get out of Zeke's contract next year. But if they don't, they owe him a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, does he sign somewhere else? Like, there's a lot of things here. But this price of RB21 is like an just high enough that like I'm uneasy about trying to get in on that price because of all this uncertainty. Brad, what are we thinking? Oh, I think you're spot on there, Wyatt. It's uh gives me gives me, you know, stomach ache for sure, thinking about it. Cause I was looking at uh spottrack.com, some more Buffalo love there, you know, Buffalo based bros over there at spot track and they currently have him valued at nearly 7.8 million a year which is wild in my opinion i mean that is more than 18 teams currently spend on the rb position as a as a room not a player a room so you know you got to factor in signing bonuses and roster bonuses and stuff like that it's not just the the salary there which they're they're uh ranking the teams as far as the RB spend. But of course we know Dallas likes to spend on running backs. Um, so, whew, I mean, would it be cool if he was back in Dallas without Zeke? Yeah, I think that would be great as we saw this weekend, but I would personally, you know, this is more of an off season move for me that I would want to be looking at. Uh, I mean, there's a plus and a minus to that because he ends up in Atlanta and his stock just goes through the roof. So we'll see what happens. What do you guys think? Skyler? Yeah, um, right off the bat, if I really had to put a guess on it, I would think next year, really bold here, but you see both Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott as Dallas Cowboy running backs. Um, I, I, yeah, I know. I would have thought they would have taken a stab maybe in the rounds three, four of the draft this year if they were planning on just seeing what they had before they moved on from these two options. With Pollard's contract going out, I would not be surprised to see them sign him kind of like Austin Eckler's deal a couple of years back, maybe a four for $20 million type deal. I think that would work good for both teams. And Ezekiel Elliott, it is a about $12 million dead cap hit next year. I wouldn't be surprised if they hung on for just one more and then took the hit about $6 million the year thereafter. Zika Elliott does a lot of things for this team um, that people may not recognize. He's still one of the best pass blockers. He's not the best pass blocker in the NFL. Um, he's a guy who knows the team. He's been a leader on that team for a long time. He's a guy who comes in and works hard every single day. And he's still not a terrible runner, especially when you can use him more sparingly than they have in the past. Tony Pollard is still a a, a a part-time player at the end of the day. I mean, I know people are really excited. The yardage is great. And there's a lot to be excited about per touch, but a couple weeks ago when Zeke was out and he was gasping for air begging to come out of the game, show me he, he still needs to be part of a rotation, which is absolutely fine. Um, luckily one of our, one of our, uh, comments we had on our youtube video last week was asking if they should be playing Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott coming back. And we, we told him, yeah, you're sticking him in there. I think with Zeke coming back, he'll still see 50% of snaps. When when Pollard has seen 50% of snaps, he scored at least 19 fantasy points per game. So it's a really easy formula there. I think rest of the season, we might be able to see him a lot closer to 50% of snaps, but that's really the ceiling. I think Tony Pollard, no team would plan for him to be seeing more than 50, 60% of the snaps. So again, before you get excited, I hate to throw a little, a little bit of a towel on it. He's, I'd still view him as a part-time player. If you're getting a your future first-round pick where you can get potentially a more uh, workhorse-type back out of that pick, I'm really here for it. I've seen Pollard go for some crazy prices. I mean, uh, JW member Jake Perry tweeted the other day, you know, go flip him for Brees Hall, which I thought was ridiculous. You know, I'm like, that, you know, that's crazy. He must be there must be a little bit of a, a banter or something. And then I, as a commissioner in a league, processed Cooper Cup for Tony Pollard this morning. I know that also sounds crazy, but really there are people out there who might say, yeah, Ezekiel happening. Elliott is dust. The contract's done. The hype might be there. It really is worth going if you have him on your team and looking. It's really tough for him to be buying in on Tony Pollard, especially after a big game, three big games in a row for him. 
uh, with the bye week tucked in there. There's no way I'm going and buying Tony Parr for just about any price. Um, and selling, I get, get, go see what you can get because a 23 first, even a 24 first, grab a first round pick out of Tony Power. I'm really here for that. And that is with knowing that he could be, you know, RB15 rest of the season type thing, which is totally fine to me. I still view him as a player who's going to be seeing 50 to 60% of the snaps maximum with Ezekiel Elliott in there and potentially moving forward when in any running back room. And that's not a player that I value more than a future first. So that's where yeah, I said Anthony Pollard. I think you kind of nailed it for me, Scott, that the price, uh, what you can get for selling Tony Pollard is greater than what you'd have to pay to go get Tony Pollard at, at this moment in time. Like I'd love to have Tony Pollard on my roster. I just don't want to pay the cost mm-hmm. of acquisition to do it. Um, Especially when you say like Skylar, that you saw a trade of him getting traded for Cooper Cup. Like if I have Tony Pollard on my team, I'm doing that right now. I <laughs> like in a heartbeat. And the, the the other thing that's a little bit of a problem for me is I think like best case scenario for Tony Pollard is he finds a new location next year where he is the guy, right, in a good offense. But he'll be 26 years old when he does that. So he's already at the age where the dynasty community is going to start to think about like. How high can he really go? He's he's going to, by the time he has like a backfield to himself, he'll already be at the point where it's hard for him to gain value in the, in the market. Yeah, and I've seen this. I've seen this play. He's been people's favorites for a long time. Get him get him the workhorse. Make him the featured back. I've seen this for a long time. I also saw it with guys like Andre Ellington, Chase Edmonds, and where Tony Powell might be more talented than those names I just mentioned. When both of those guys got their chance, they stayed exactly the same. They're just... 50 60 percent snap players maximum they're not a workhorse they can't handle 20 touches uh they're just they're just not built for it uh he's he's efficient in his touches and honestly i'd probably think he's best with a back like zeke where you know zeke isn't going to take every single touch and you know power is going to get some touches and you hope he's efficient on those touches in a high powered offense like this Dallas one that can put up 30 points any single week. I think this is best case scenario for Tony Pollard and where we said we don't want to go buy him. I'm also okay with holding him. Even if, you know, even if you could go get a future first in prices, I am okay with holding him. If it gives you the freedom to go move Joe Mixon for a first and a second, go move Alvin Kamara for a first and a second, go move Dalvin cook for a first and a second. If P- Tony power being an RB two rest of the season locked with an RB one ceiling weekly gives you the freedom to go move one of those older backs for a first and a second, go do it. I'm cool with that. And then you can play and see where Tony powered is in the off season, reevaluate and decide if you want to keep him in his newer, same position or move on from him at cost. Can I throw out a hypothetical here of, yeah. uh, all right. So, Tony Pollard, I'm going to, I want to lay out like the buy case because I agree with both of you guys uh, completely. We're, we're in the same place. I agree. He's not a feature back. He's not going to be Jamal Charles all of a sudden or something like that. Um, but what about trading DeAndre Swift for ta- Tony Pollard plus? Like you get. Tony Pollard in a, a first tear down or DeAndre sometime. Swift or it's, something like that. It's got to be a first. I, yeah. I would I wouldn't entertain that deal for less than a first. For a first, I think I think I probably do take that deal, even though I'm higher on I DeAndre would. Swift and consensus. It'll have him as a I think I have him on RB seven right now in Dynasty rankings, which is a fall from where I had him earlier in the season. I had him as high as RB three or four earlier in the season in the off season, but I'm still very comfortable with DeAndre Swift. That's a whole video in and of itself. Um, especially if they bubble wrap them the rest of the year. I think I I'm still in on DeAndre Swift, but that's a big off season debate that we will gladly have on here. But yeah, I would entertain it at that cost. DeAndre Swift for power in the first, the first is the real big deal. Do not settle down for a second. I would not trade DeAndre Swift for power in a second. I'm, I'm entertaining though. I think at least thinking about like Joe Mixon and a, or like tearing down to Pollard in a second. That one I might entertain. Like that's where it drops down enough where I think like now I'm starting to consider it with a second. 